This next section is all about ArcGIS in action, and we're going to be showing you multiple examples of the technology and how it can be leveraged for many different workflows. But I'd like to kick off this next section with a short video highlighting Johns Creek, Georgia. We were looking at major cities across the country, you know, the New Yorks and LA's and San Francisco's of the world, at what they were doing with the same technology we had access to and thinking, why can't we do that? We've got these tools that make it really easy for us to visualize vast amount of data and to easily communicate that to anybody. Data is important in making any good decision. Data is the one truth. You can interpret the data in many ways, but at the end of the day, hopefully, if you're looking at data objectively, then you can make a very informed decision. We use the whole litany of, of Esri products. We use ArcGIS Online. We're also using ArcGIS Pro for all of our desktop needs. Our major concerns at Johns Creek are two things, public safety and traffic. So we're constantly trying to build visualizations, we're trying to do analysis, we're trying to pave roads. We can go through the entire city and just pave every road and it'll cost us a billion dollars. Or we can take limited resources, use GIS, and very easily and surgically fix the problems where they occur and save a lot of resources in the meantime. We're all using the same database because we have it as an open data hub. So I don't have to worry about my public works department using one set of maps and my community development team using another set and police with a third set of data, as well as my citizens. So when someone's pulling something up on Creek View at home, they're looking at that same kind of information. So it's that building of trust and transparency and they're all connected by that singular set. In the past, if you're looking to locate a fire station, it's, hey, there's a great spot and the land is cheap, let's build it there. With GIS and all the data that we have, we can look at the density of fire calls and where that's happening. And then we can look at available properties and try to figure out, based on potential response times, where the best location for a fire station would be versus where it would be ineffective or marginally effective. That can be the difference sometimes between a fire truck getting to your house in time and it not getting to your house in time. That's the power of GIS. That makes me feel like, you know, if I don't get anything else done that day, I've actually done something good. I start tearing up here because I'm so emotional, seriously. We're looking at density, we're looking at where businesses are located, we're looking at where the parks are in relation to how much does it serve particular residents. We're even looking at things like what kind of lights should we use so that there's not a spillover into the neighborhoods. There's a, a variety of reasons that an entrepreneur or any kind of company, even an existing company, might want to go to our data hub and download data. Data is becoming very quickly the, the new oil. It can be used to test ideas to find new markets, to try to look at, you know, not only where are, where are the neighborhoods in Johns Creek, but how do the demographics match up with that? If the mayor sees a problem in the city and wants to address it, whether it's traffic or stormwater infrastructure that we need to maintain or whatever, he can look at the data, make those determinations himself, using staff to inform his decisions. As an example, we knew that we had an underservice of parks in certain areas of the city. We knew that intuitively but we used the data to sort of pinpoint, given the land that was available, what would be the smartest use of land to ensure that we broaden the service opportunities and recreational opportunities for our citizens. One of the biggest wins is just seeing people use our technology. We've launched an Alexa skill that ties into our open data portal. The intent behind it was to take all the data all the visualizations that we have in the data hub and try to distill that up to the 10 things that people are really most interested in and communicate those. This could help democratize data. What we're doing in Johns Creek is risky in some situations. I mean, we're taking public money and we're trying to build Alexa skills that tie into an open data portal. We're trying to take data you know, and visualize it in a way that very few places are doing. I think that's a mindset change for most people because if you've been in government for decades, there's a tendency to think, well, I know where things need to go because I've built 12 fire stations in my career. Well, maybe you do, and maybe the data will just reinforce it. But isn't that something that you'd want to know? We're trying to, to positively turn the wheel 
so that we're living in a better society that's safer, that has cleaner air, and you know, is more equitable for, for more people. That, that means something. That's where we, we make the most impact. Wow, every time I watch that video, I just feel really compelled that the vision of this one person, the chief data officer, was able to transform an entire city organization. It's just so powerful what someone with a vision can do. And that's part of what we want to focus on with this next section. It's not just about using tools for the sake of using tools, but starting with high-level initiatives because your work helps impact the success of these initiatives. So with Johns Creek, Georgia, what were their two main priorities? Public safety and traffic, right? And they talked about, we want to have a safer community, a more equitable community. These are bold, high-level initiatives. And in Johns Creek, they're a great example of how it required everybody to come together, work together using the same source of information in different ways, but to impact those workflows to be successful here. In this next section, we're going to be highlighting ArcGIS in action in five areas. Law enforcement, engineering, public works, land records, and planning. Let's take a look at amplifying GIS for law enforcement. So I've been both a municipal crime analyst for a city and also a 911 GIS analyst for a county. So I can personally attest to the time it takes to get your data out of a CAD or RMS system, maybe into SQL Server if you're lucky, QA, QC it there, maybe then get it into a spreadsheet that you can then geocode and then bring into your GIS system. All of this before you can even begin to look at a map and analyze it and keep your community safer with these uh, workflows. So time is of the essence in public safety and that type of project is not something I would want to do on a weekly or even more frequent basis, this whole export, geocode, QA, QC process. So what I'm going to show you today is a workflow that uses Pro and the Crime Analysis Toolbar to automatically bring your data in at regular intervals coming out of a CAD or RMS system. So you may be thinking, well, I'm not a crime analyst. Why would I do this? Well, if you are in a centralized GIS department, I just want you to imagine what's possible. And perhaps you don't know your, your pals over in public safety. Maybe this is a workflow you can help them with. And if nothing else, just use your imagination and think about different uh, tools that I'm showing you in Pro and how you can apply them in your own daily workflows. So let's take a look here at the spreadsheet. This is a list of all the crimes from the Rochester, New York Police Department in October 2019. So this could be my starting point after I've done that export. I've got about 700 total crimes, and I want to bring them into a desktop tool like Pro to routinely analyze them and, and share the data with others. Let me get Pro open. I've added a web map from my portal that shows all of the crimes in Rochester up until the point that I received that spreadsheet. So let's take a look at the attribute table. There are about 24,650 crimes up until I received this new export. So something I'd like to do is append those new crimes to this hosted feature data set. And I can do that using the crime analysis toolbar. So let's zoom in to a specific area of Rochester called the Maplewood Historic District, which is this cute area of single family homes built at the turn of the century. Uh, maybe you know a place like that. And in general, it's a pretty safe area, but we want to look at some potentially um, existing crime patterns in the area or patterns that may be developing. So to do so, I'd like to import that new data. The Crime Analysis Toolbar has a whole suite of tools, and this is meant to um, lower the barrier to entry to crime analysts who not, may not be familiar with desktop GIS tools. Here is a selection of tools that they might use in their daily workflows. 
So there's data management, selection, technical and strategic analysis, investigative analysis, and so on. In this case, I'm going to set up the import from the XY table that I had in my Excel spreadsheet. And this is a tool that you run one time to create a configuration file. So this would be my test file. I would specify that source Excel spreadsheet that I showed you. And the target features are the RPD crimes, the Rochester Police Department layer of crimes that already exists. I'm trying to append the data from the spreadsheet into that feature layer. I would authenticate it with my portal or ArcGIS Online username and password, since this data is sensitive. And then I'll select a few other fields, such as a unique identification field and the date field. Now, once I've entered latitude and longitude and run this configuration file, I shouldn't have to do this again as long as my data export always goes to the same place. So that's a one-step process. And then you just run this import records tool whenever you're ready to append those, say, 700 new crimes to your 24,000. So I'll choose the configuration file I've already created and let it run. So we should pay attention in the map and also while the tool's running to watch it iterate through. It's checking to make sure there are no duplicate records, perhaps something that was entered twice by accident or on the 31st of the prior month at 11.59. Uh, we want to make sure all the identification numbers are unique and we want to make sure that those are appended to the existing layer. So. I want to bring your attention again just to the crime analysis toolbar and mention how this was developed by Esri's public safety team. So they're really in touch with the needs of this segment of users. And all of these tactical and strategic analysis tools were created because they know that those are two very distinct type of crime analysts. And they have two very different roles. So my import records tool has completed. And now when I refresh the map and the attribute table, we should see that that number has increased to 25,352. Now, it's hard to tell where in the map these records actually exist, so I want to use one of the selection tools, in this case, select by date and time. So you as a GIS analyst or whatever your role in your organization, maybe you're thinking, I could just write a query for this. But this tool, again, is to lower the barrier to entry to this specific group of users. So if someone would like to select um, by all of the crimes that occurred in October and 2019, again, that's the, date, the year and date of the data that I just received. This is kind of setting up the attribute query in a more user-friendly way. So now it's going to select all of those 700 crimes, and you see them in the map. And I'd like to zoom in to a specific area and, and take a further look. And this is Albemarle Street, where we're seeing these four crimes that occurred, two of them prior to October 2019, and then two just in the, that one month alone. And so we're seeing larceny, burglary, and, and another larceny. And I'm kind of wondering if there is a pattern that is unfolding here. We have a lot of time-enabled visualizations I've already mentioned in the pro demo. And another one that you can use is called the data clock. So the data clock, when you specify your date field occurred through, the rings that are concentric are going to represent the years, so 2017 on the innermost ring and 2019 on the outermost ring. And then we're seeing the slices are months of the year. So I could filter this map, um, this chart rather, by my map extents and see if that same pattern is consistent at the scale of an entire city versus a specific neighborhood or jurisdiction. Or I could filter it based on the selection. And we can see what patterns exist there. But turning off both those filters, I'm noticing that when it renders, the chart has a lot of dark blue across all three years in both July and August. So my speculation here is that maybe this location, the city has a problem with juvenile offenders who aren't in school during the summer and could be causing some problems. But that's just a guess. 
Now, there are a lot of great tools in Pro and in the Crime Analysis Toolbar, but ultimately, the crime analyst or perhaps the GIS analyst for the city who is helping out their law enforcement division, they know that this data has to get reported back to a lieutenant, to a captain of a fusion center. Those folks don't really care about what I'm doing here in Pro, but they probably would like to see this data uh, in a web-friendly way. So an example of that could be a web map. We're looking again at Map Viewer Beta, and it has the same bookmarks set up, so I'll go right back to Albemarle Street, and we see those same four crimes. So how powerful is that, that we imported those records uh, just for the one month, and it appended it to the feature data set, and now we can use it across the whole ArcGIS Online platform. But going back to Pro, we can make this even easier, if you can believe it, on yourselves or on those that you're supporting. So going back to my import records tool, this goes for all geoprocessing tools in Pro 2.5. This little arrow right here next to the Run button enables me to schedule the tool to run at a specific time. So I can give it a task name, and now I don't have to necessarily deal with like Windows Task Scheduler. I can just say when I want it to begin, that I want it to run weekly and repeat however often, and this is a really great way to keep that data flowing. As long as the CAD RMS data goes to the same spot, it will continue to be appended at regular intervals into the feature layer. So again, moving back to my web map, it's always going to stay updated when I keep that data regularly being appended into my feature layer. But I could even take this one step further and put it in a dashboard. Those, situation, those folks like captains and lieutenants, they want this type of situational awareness. Definitely. When we think of amplifying GIS, this is a perfect example. So what Nicole was showing is how a GIS specialist or even a crime analyst can get that necessary information, get it exported, and put into a format that could be utilized in maps, and then create something like a dashboard to be used by additional people within the department, such as managers, supervisors, etc. So within this dashboard, as Nicole is interacting with it, you can see how the different widgets and the maps and the resources automatically update. Very helpful, right? People don't have to read a list of instructions to know how to use this. They just know that behind the scenes, the data is accurate. It's updated ongoing, probably on a daily basis or more often. And they can easily filter information based on district, based on person who is on duty, and much more. So between maps, applications, charts, and graphs, the wealth of information that you can make available to more people within your organization it's powerful. So we quickly ran through just some ways that you can support your law enforcement agency in amplifying the GIS, again, so it's not tools being used by one or two people, but providing a wealth of resources to a great many people within that department. Back to an earlier slide when I talked about those high-level initiatives, well, what do you think is most important to public safety? Right? They want to make sure that the communities are safe and well-run and healthy communities. So with those high-level initiatives, the workflows that Nicole just highlighted, are many ways at the technical level we can support the work being done to reach those initiatives. And what we showed, of course, is just one of the many ways that we can support law enforcement, but ArcGIS Online, ArcGIS Pro, ArcGIS in general is the one platform to support many missions for that important department. And lastly, I wanted to highlight just some of the tools and technology that we used during our demonstrations. And I want to point out again, the Crime Analysis Toolbar is currently available. It's a free add-in, so check it out. Mm -hmm.